Today, instead of slowing things down, we're going to be speeding things up. Yeah, we're going to be time-lapsing an animal carcass as it rots down. And uh, if you're squeamish, look away now. So this is going to be the bad boy that we're decomposing today. Right. Uh, this is a Bosque's monitor lizard, or a savannah monitor. And uh, very sadly died of natural causes, but then he got donated to us. Hopefully with the time-lapse we'll be able to see uh, exactly what happens once he starts decomposing. Yeah, it should be really revealing. For those of you who aren't familiar with the time-lapse, it's a process whereby you take many still photographs over a long period of time. So you can see something which would conventionally take a really long time in a short amount of time. So we're going to be using two cameras for this. We're going to have one side on, one from the top. Pretty much good to go. So that was the decomposition of a monitor lizard. To see how it all began, we need to go back to four and a half weeks ago. There are about five basic stages of decomposition. We're going to have to sort of mimic the first. These are the decomposers we're going to be using. So this was a chicken. You can see it's been actually reduced to bones because we've had it out probably a little bit too long. So it's absolutely chocker with maggots. Fly larvae or maggots <laughs> are fantastic meat eaters. So we're going to be putting those in first. <laughs> Don't vomit through your mask. <laughs> we kind of want the initial stages, so sort of between zero and three days is that initial decay period. So in here, there's absolutely shed loads of fly eggs, and that's perfect. Uh, so we're now going to harvest some of these fly eggs, some of these little larvae. There's loads in there. When these maggots go to work on our lizard, what sort of thing will they be doing? Um, so they're one of the early starters, so they will be going for the dead meat. They're, um, they're known as detritivores which is basically sort of eating dead stuff and, and even faecal matter, poo, so you and me. Cool, I reckon we've got enough there. So let's go back to Mr Lizard and leave this stinky lot alone. So I'm just about to make a few incisions on our monitor lizard to um, help out those little fly eggs going into the skin and under the skin, because that reptile skin is so solid. Whereabouts are you going to make the incision then? Well, I think we'll start underneath in his belly. Um, so... Are we going to put them in several places or just one? Yeah, I think so, in a few places. Right, so we're just about making it through connective tissue there. God, it's the first lot of fly eggs going in. Oh, there's thousands of eggs in this one. It's a few bit further up. So, what's going to happen next? We'll probably see it start to bloat and generally trigger these fly eggs to get to it. Uh, so the fly eggs are in, mate. He looks <laughs> ready and the cameras are ready. Cool. So let's get it going and uh, we'll be back in a week to see how he's got on. So it's been a couple of weeks since we were here with the smelly chickens and maggots. Yeah. And to be honest, I can actually smell the lizard already. So it's starting to honk a little bit. It seriously is. Let's no get way. in there. Right, here goes. Oh, God, yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> oh my god. That's a wall of smell. It's changed completely though, hasn't it? Those mogas have done a great job just clearing out all the sort of actual tissues, just a bag of skin over those bones. What would happen in the wild and what we're going to do now is introduce some beetles, domestic beetles, um, also known as larder beetles. Okay, so time for the beetles time for the beetles. Lava to go on. They like this sort of stage of dry decay, that's when they come in when the maggots ship out. Yeah. And they should really strip any bits of sinew on those bones away. So I reckon it's probably going to be another week or two maybe. Yeah, we can come back. Enjoy your dinner lads. So it's been about four and a half weeks since we put the lizard down. What do you reckon it's going to look like? Disgusting, but awesome as well. All right, I can't wait to see it. Let's give it a go. Oh, I can already. Oh, it. yeah, it's <coughs> a bit ripe. Oh man. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of flies in here. All those little maggots turn into pupae, which then turn into more flies, which leads to more flies. It's the circle of life. It's one dead lizard for thousands of newborns. He's got uh, something called beta keratin in his skin. Yeah, we don't have that, and it's so tough. You can see it's the only thing remaining. Even the beetles haven't got through it. So yeah, well, that's kind of interesting in itself. Yeah, uh, but I would quite like just, just snip away at that. Yeah, and just leave it with a final skeleton shot. Yeah, I'd like to see what's under that. Oh, that's a great looking skeleton. So there you have it: the decomposition of a monitor lizard, taking over four and a half weeks. Make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged for more amazing wonders from the natural world. I'm Chad Gordon Higgins and I'm a time lapse specialist. I've joined the Earth Unplugged team here at Latitude Festival and I'm going to give you some tips and pointers how to do some simple time lapses. There's four things you need to be a time lapse cameraman. It's confidence, you can't change any of your shots. You've got to leave it and sit there and wait. You've got to be confident in yourself, but everything's going to be okay, whatever happens. 